Hello everybody and welcome back to the new VR news. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your one channel for everything VR related. So this week we actually have a bunch of new VR game releases to go over. It looks like Facebook is making a strong push into AR. HTC might finally be making some decent decisions and we got a cool VR chair to check out. So if you end up enjoying this video, don't forget to click that like button guys. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. All right, let's get into this. So first up in the VR game news, Virtual Battlegrounds is releasing in early access this week on April 8th. This is a battle royale style shooter, and I've actually done two gaming events throughout the alpha. One was actually today, and I currently have mixed feelings on this title. I will be releasing an early access first impressions video later this week if you guys want to check that out. So next up, we actually got three new VR game releases last week. The first was Lies Beneath, which I do have a first impressions video up. If you are an Oculus Quest owner and you're interested in a horror themed shooter, then I do recommend this game. It's pretty darn creepy and a high quality game for the Oculus Quest. The next two titles are on PC VR, the first one being Good Goliath. Now this is a tower defense slash wave shooter. The game will have you fighting hordes of smaller enemies and a variety of other evil giant creatures. Graphically, it reminds me a little bit of Mace and Grace, but it looks like there's a lot more content here. Our next title is The Morrigan, which just went into full release, and I always say that VR can use more RPG titles. While this is more of a dungeon crawler, it does look like a great change of pace compared to what we've recently been playing in VR. Both Good Goliath and The Morrigan are currently on a special release promotion at 10% off for $17.99 US. So moving into the software news, Steam has updated their survey process, which now more accurately represents who owns a VR system. VR hardware no longer needs to be actively plugged in at the time of the survey. Any VR headset that's been plugged in within the last 30 days will be counted. The survey has also been expanded to include additional headsets. And the most recent Steam survey has over 1 million VR users. The Rift S is currently leading as the most used headset. And while the original HTC Vive headset is still pretty popular, all HTC products are on a decline. Next up, Facebook has signed an exclusive deal with Plessy, an AR screen manufacturer. In a recent press statement, Plessy has stated, we've decided to work with Facebook to help achieve their vision of the next computing platform centered around people. Under a new commercial agreement, our lead manufacturing operations will be dedicated to helping Facebook prototype and develop new technologies for potential use in AR VR space. Now there's not much additional information here, but the micro LED displays are said to combine a very high density RPG pixel array, have a high frame rate, low power consumption, and a very high brightness for use in AR and VR. Now, we don't really know if this is going to have a larger impact on future VR or AR products, but we know Facebook is not a stranger to any exclusivity deals or buying up any game studios that will help further advance their VR and now potentially their AR goals. So moving into the hardware news, it looks like HTC is finally making some decent decisions. HTC is finally offering a wireless bundle. Now this is a step in the right direction, and it actually saves you over $200 from buying a Cosmos and then later buying the wireless adapter. Now I previously stated that HTC needs to double down on their wireless adapter because it is the only advantage they have over their competition. But due to the tracking issues of the Vive Cosmos, I still can't recommend this package. But being the only headset that's not sold out at the moment, this might help sales. Another pretty small decision they made is to release the Vive Cosmos Elite in a standalone fashion. This is the perfect upgrade path for owners of the original Vive and a wireless adapter. A lot of people will not leave their Vive simply because they do not want to give up the wireless feature. And while you might be thinking Oculus Quest and virtual desktop right now, it's not the same as the wireless adapter. The latency is noticeably higher with virtual desktop. So if you are an OG Vive owner and have that wireless adapter, well, you finally have a decent upgrade path. Now, ideally, if HTC really wanted to get back in the game, they would combine both of these two bundles. 
a Cosmos Elite with SteamVR tracked versions of their new controllers, and a wireless adapter is a competitive product, even if it's priced near $1,000. It has specs that are comparable with the Valve Index. Plus it has two things no one else has, a wireless adapter and availability, because everything else is either back-ordered or sold out. If you're interested in getting a standalone Cosmos Elite, pre-orders have already started in many locations and it will go on sale mid-April. All right, so our last hardware story is the Roto VR. So Roto VR has recently picked up nearly $2 million in investments to help support the rollout of this new chair. Now they originally had a failed Kickstarter back in 2015, but that didn't stop them and you can now buy your very own Roto chair. Unfortunately, it's $1,500 to $2,000, depending on the version and accessories you purchase. And while that price tag might sound insane, it can actually be a pretty good deal. Your average gaming chair is gonna cost you a few hundred dollars, and a nice quality office chair designed to have you seated for eight hours a day can easily cost you $1,000. The chair also has some other major selling points. First off, if you're highly susceptible to VR motion sickness, the electronic rotation of the chair might help you in that regard. It also allows for tangle-free VR gaming, so you won't need a wireless adapter or bungee system. You can also now remain seated in VR, which will help you overcome VR fatigue. The chair does include foot pedals for movement. There are built-in vibrational rumblers, so you will actually feel the game audio, making this chair ideal for racing simulators. So you get a little extra pump when you rev the engine. And there are accessories that include flight sticks, steering wheels, and even a table for a keyboard and mouse. And again, all of these accessories would plug directly into the chair itself, making it just that much more convenient. Now, if the chair is actually comfortable and performs well, then this is a winning product. And since I'm currently in the market for a new chair, well, I might have to look into this a bit more. Okay, everybody, that is today's new VR news. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I've stated a few times before, things have been a bit crazy in the Mateo 311 household due to the quarantine. I've been trying to work and watch kids at the same time. But I'm going to do my best to get new content out. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I will see you guys on next time.